From the Old Testament to the New Testament, we see over 100 scriptures with detailed information of what many call the end times, the last days. Now we are currently in a time frame where many biblical prophecies are being fulfilled. We are also now on the verge of entering a new eon, a new age. Christians call it the Kingdom Age, and the Jews say it's a messianic end time. On the first day of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, a 15-year-old Jewish boy named Matan died, and it was a clinical death. After his death, he had an out-of-body experience where his soul left his body and he was shown and taken and seen many things in heaven and hell. In this experience, he saw many people studying Torah and what he called the lower paradise. He was told by angels to do mitzvahs, which are God's commandments from the Torah. He was told new explanations of Torah, to study Torah. He stated the redemption is very close and that the war of Gog and Magog has already started, as well as many other end of days information. Now I'd like to point out is Natan is not from Jerusalem. He comes from a secular background and has never studied in yeshiva. And for those who don't know, yeshiva is a Jewish institution that focuses on the study of traditional religious texts, primarily the Talmud and Torah. Natan's testimony is a powerful confirmation of what Forerunner Ministries International head pastor Michael Petro has been teaching for many years. Now here's a quick look at some of Natan's story. He is only 15 years old. When the soul leaves the body, it can receive huge amounts of information in just minutes. That means that what takes years for a person here in this world to learn, there in that world, one can know and understand alone within a matter of minutes, everything. He felt like he left his body, exited through his nose, and at first he floated above himself, and at first he didn't understand who he was, where his self was. Yes, gentlemen, that is what I said at the beginning. It's hard to understand, but what we can acquire in years of learning, there you can understand everything in one minute. Take note of what he is saying. He says, I understand alone, see alone. He isn't the first one who was there and came back. I personally know many, many more like him. They all relate the same thing, a huge amount of information in a second. That means that a person can be in one place and know where his father is, where his mother is, what is happening with them. I knew everything. And simply, it's simply the world of truth. In the world of truth, everything is revealed. There is nothing hidden. The soul can receive. Now those two people simply took me, the angels of destruction took me, and they took me to a place, a scale, with huge wing pens. My transgressions and my mitzvot, every single thing like I told you before, the smallest mitzvot overturn entire worlds. You get a huge reward when you make a blessing. It's something gigantic, gigantic, something really huge. And also a transgression. The smallest thing is also something really, really, really big. He said to me, do a lot of mitzvah. Why? In the end you pay. Even if you don't do anything, you will pay in the end. He told me that what I had seen there was nothing. And he spoke to me in a really frightening voice. I'm here with Michael Petro. He's the pastor and founder of Forerunner Ministries International. He's also an apostle and a prophet and an author as well as a doctor. And he teaches from the Hebraic mindsets, and he goes through the scripture and really unpacks them in the parabolic meaning, um, as well as going through temple theology and really upholding Torah and mitzvah, like we just saw that Natan experienced when he was in heaven. So now that we've seen these clips about Natan, and he's talking about how in heaven the mitzvahs are so huge, it's such a huge blessing, it overturns um, entire worlds, even the angel of death is telling him to do mitzvahs. And then we see in scripture that, you know, um, in Deuteronomy, there's blessing and curses if you obey or disobey the commandments. And then we see also Yeshua talking about the commandments, that if you love me, you will keep the commandments. So this is why I love being a part of your ministry, because you do uphold the commandments. Now, on that hall where I was at, a place called Lower Gan Eden, they took me there, and they suddenly showed me a gate, and they opened the gate, those two people. And I saw people learning Torah, and I saw the light there, and it was something really huge, really beautiful. The light I saw in the beginning was nothing compared to that light. Nothing, nothing at all. This was something good. That was the lower Gan Eden. Just think that there was higher levels than that. When they opened Gan Eden, so he explained to us that is the lowest level, the lowest of all levels. And you saw people sitting there learning Torah. Yes. And one who teaches others? Wow, wow. I'm telling you that a blessing. A blessing is huge. Oh, wow. 
Now we've just seen clips about Natan and he's talking about the Torah and how he received new revelations of Torah while he was up there. He saw people studying the Torah and what he called a lower Gan Eden, lower paradise. And he talked as well as people who teach the Torah are considered great. And, you know, this is something that you also are very um, outspoken about in your ministry. You uphold the Torah, but you uphold Torah in the prophetic manner. This young man, he dies and he ends up in heaven. And while he's there, uh, God begins to show him things. And he begins to show him that at the very lowest levels of heaven, uh, people are learning the Torah. People are learning the mitzvahs. They're learning the 613 commandments. Even the angel of death tells him, learn the mitzvahs. And in this, we have to ask ourselves within the body of Christ, why aren't we teaching those same things? God was revealing his Torah in the New Testament. Now, do you also know what will happen? Yes, I know what is going to happen, yes. And you know that from there? Yes, only from there. Everything is only from there. And where are we holding right now? Where are we holding right now? In a period. Not a good one at all. At all. Like, I can tell you that the redemption is very close to here. I knew that it's really soon. You just know. Once you are a soul, you just know. A few weeks. What? It's not a lie. What? No. No, no, no. The redemption will happen now, no matter what. But, yes, but... What's this about a lie? This this is what I saw. What can I tell you? This young man, he dies, and he ends up in heaven. And while he's there, uh... God begins to show him things, and he begins to show him that at the very lowest levels of heaven, uh, people are learning the Torah, people are learning the mitzvahs. They're learning the 613 commandments. Even the angel of death tells him, learn the mitzvahs. And in this, we have to ask ourselves within the body of Christ, why aren't we teaching those same things? If they sin, it will come to pass much more harshly. Much more difficult. And if everybody repents, it will come to pass in an easy way. It's going to happen no matter what. Now, according to what you know there, what you saw there, how is it going to happen? Based on what I knew, right now our situation is not good at all. I mean, not good. What's going to happen? 
It's going to be a very big war, and everybody, the whole world, will be in that war, based on what I learned. The whole world will be in that war. Everybody, all the Gentiles, all the Arabs, everybody will be against Israel and will fight in that war. How will it begin? It will be started by somebody named Gog, as far as I knew up there, only up there. He is called Gog? Yes. And do you know who this Gog is? I am sure I know who it is. Who is it? Obama. President Obama. He will start Gog and Magog? He will be the one who starts that war. He will bring his whole army. He will start the war here. And he'll fight against us? He'll fight against us. At first everyone will just want Israel. Jerusalem, Israel. Everyone will want it. Jerusalem? Jerusalem, yes. Everyone will want it. The whole world. They won't care about us. They will just want Jerusalem. Everyone will fight against each other because they want it. Not long at all. That, all of that, all of the bad things will take two weeks. All of the bad things will take two weeks. What will happen during those two weeks? What are the bad things? In those two weeks, what is the bad thing? More than a few million people will die. They will die like the only thing that saves them is if they repent. If a person learns the Torah and does good. That's what will save him. What do you mean what you saw? Did you see it like a movie of the future? Yeah, like a movie of the future. I see it in a movie of the future. You see it in a few seconds, but it's lots and lots of time. Like the movie of my life I saw it first. They showed me my life in a split second. Like in a fraction of a second, they showed it to me. And I saw every single second of my life. When I was a baby, when I was a little boy, I saw it all. Now let's move forward. You saw a movie. I saw a movie. Let's call it a movie of the future, of what's going to be. Yes. Yes, I saw everyone attacking Israel, and came against us and fought against us. The IDF will hold them off for two days. Then everyone will just kill us and we won't have anyone to help but God. And then, suddenly... Wait, wait. This war, the IDF will hold for only two days? Two days. And after two days? We'll be finished by then. No IDF? No IDF. So everything is open? Everything is open. So when you say that Gog is Obama, Obama is the United States, you say that he will lead the... He will lead the whole war. And who will join him? Who will join him? Iran will join him. The UN. The whole UN. Russia? Yes, Russia. South Korea. The whole UN. Really, everyone. Everyone. All 70 nations will rise against us. 70. Where is ISIS in all this? ISIS. This is what I saw. They will kidnap people. They will just kidnap people. They will kidnap our people? Yes, like they did to Galad Shalit. They will also do that. They will kidnap people and torture them and things like that. Also, now, this Messiah, I mean, the Messiah, he will fight against Obama. And not only that, he will kill him and bury him in Israel. And I saw that. Yes, he will be buried in Israel. I knew that it's really soon. You just know. Once you are a soul, you just know. A few weeks. What? It's not a lie. What? No. No, no, no. The redemption will happen now, no matter what. But, yes, but... What's this about a lie? This, this is what I saw. What can I tell you? This young man, he dies, and he ends up in heaven. And while he's there, uh, God begins to show him things, and he begins to show him that at the very lowest levels of heaven, uh, people are learning the Torah. People are learning the mitzvahs. They're learning the 613 commandments. Even the angel of death tells him, learn the mitzvahs. And in this, we have to ask ourselves, within the body of Christ, why aren't we teaching those same things?